Hey everybody, it's Chris Francis with churchfilmmakers.com here and today I'm going to show you how you can turn your tripod into a big expensive light. So on this project I had the person that was going to interview uh, take some videos of their home uh, just so I could kind of do a digital scout and I picked this living room because it has a ton of natural light and so when I was thinking I was like it's got so much natural light I'm not going to need to bring very much light but once I got there and actually got the camera out and framed up the best angle for the interview I quickly realized that I didn't have enough light with me and there was this window that was going to be in the shot and so in order to expose for the person's face I was going to have to completely blow out that window um, and then one of the other side effects of that is uh, I started getting this really big hot spot on the couch and that was because I didn't have anything outside to modify that light coming in. So I showed up and all I had was a Kinoflow Diva light uh, tripod, microphone and my production assistant and a couple of sound blankets and that's really it. All right, so here's a diagram of what we were working with. Uh, my cinematographer down here was running on the Canon C500 with the Rokinon 50 millimeter, and we were at all the way open at T1.5, uh, really trying to create some real shallow depth of field here. Um, I was just off camera. Melissa, we were interviewing here. Um, as you can see, we had windows all along this wall, basically, and then we had this window here that was in the shot. And we had some direct sunlight coming in here that was producing that, that really bad hot spot on the couch. And then just off camera here, we had one Kinoflow Diva with daylight bulbs uh, going this way. I think we had the, the Flozier diffusion on it as well. Um, and that's all we had to work with. Now, in order to have properly exposed this scene, um, here's all the equipment that we probably would have needed. Um, starting in the back here, I would have needed a frame, probably six by six to cover uh, this whole window outside with a double net to really cut down the exposure so the background wasn't so blown out. And then to deal with the sunlight that was hitting this part of the couch, I probably would have needed probably a four by four floppy or some other large flag to prevent the sunlight from coming in directly through the window and I probably would have need to bring it up pretty high because I would have because I'd want the light to still be coming in through the window to light the scene I just would want to cover the spot that was just hitting this couch right here and then on top of all of that I probably would have needed a much larger light source probably something like a 1.2 HMI light um, shooting through a big thing of diffusion just to have a really soft flattering light on Melissa and to bring the exposure up on her to match the rest of the room. So you can see that this would have been a lot more gear. Um, not only would I needed like the frames, I would have needed two stands over here on this frame, a stand on this floppy, uh, sandbags on everything. Um, I would have needed the HMI, a stand there, probably some more sandbags. And then uh, at least one more stand, if not two, for this frame of diffusion. Um, so that was a ton of equipment that I did not have. I think just in rentals alone, that probably would have been a couple hundred bucks. And I really would have needed another crew member and probably an extra, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes of setup time. So um, what I'm getting ready to show you is I was actually able to accomplish pretty close to what I would have been able to do with this with only, uh, with only one Kinoflow Diva and my trusty tripod. Here we are, tutorial time. I am in Adobe Premiere. I'm sure you could do this in Final Cut or another editing software. All right, so as you can see, as I'm playing through this clip, you can see the windows totally blown out. We got some uh, pretty killer hot spots here. And I quickly noticed that she's probably not gonna cross frame on the window or over here. So what I did is as soon as we were done filming this interview, before we moved the tripod or anything, we went ahead and rolled the exact same framing. I just uh, flipped the switch on the ND filter in my Canon C500. Um, now you could probably do this trick by closing the aperture, um, 
But if you do it that way, the background is going to change a little bit because the depth of field will change. So um, if you have a camera that has an ND filter built into it, or if you have one handy that you can put on the lens, definitely do that. So basically what we're doing here is we've got our own like DIY HDR. So uh, we rolled this for about 30 seconds too, which is important because if you'll notice, you can, you'll be able to see the leaves uh, move and stuff like that. So that's going to even help sell this shot even more. If you, uh, you know, if you were in a crowded place and you had people walking by and you only rolled for five seconds, people would start to notice that it's the same dude walking by every five seconds. So I'm just going to bring this in over here on another layer, We're kind of doing our own HDR technique as I toggle this off and on. You can see the frame is the same, uh, but the exposure is quite a bit different here. And then I'm going to add a crop filter here. I'm just going to do this kind of down and dirty real quick for the sake of the tutorial. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, I'm going to add a mask here and I'm going to just kind of aim for the corners of this window. Um, I like to zoom out like big time. Ooh. Let's try that again. I like to zoom way out here, um, way beyond the boundary of the frame because I know on an effect like this that I'm going to feather this and if I did the corners here and here by the time I feather we're going to lose the effect a little bit up at the top so um, I go way outside of the boundaries here and you'll see how that's going to work in just a second. So I'm going to invert this mask and then I'm going to make one of these 100%. It doesn't really matter what, which one because it's not going to affect what's inside the box. Um, so obviously this is looking pretty super duper fake, right? So let's do a few things to help make that look a little better. I'm going to go ahead and feather this. Let's try like 70 pixels. All right, that's already looking better there. Um, obviously this is way darker than the rest of the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the exposure and, and lumetry here. Try to get it something that feels like it's somewhat matches. So let's see, let's toggle that off and on. Yeah, that's already looking better there. So we'll call that good enough. And then what I'm going to do next to tackle this area over here, is I'm going to duplicate this layer by holding down Alt and just pulling this up. And then I'm going to delete this mask that was already copied from this layer to this layer. So now this, uh, this layer here is unaltered. So it's got the crop filter on it. I'm going to do a new mask. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go to like 25% and just going to click around this hot spot here. Again, I'm going to go way out here because I know I'm going to feather this a lot. Then I'm going to invert this mask and this was already 100% from my last mask so uh, kind of messy now since I don't have any hard edges like I did on the windowsill I know I'm going to be able to feather this a lot more to really help sell this so let's just try 150 okay it's looking better but you're starting to see these edges of the hot spots here so I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit more couple key spots here okay we'll call that good enough and then again toggle that off and on looks super fake you go from super blown out to super dark so I'm going to um, adjust the exposure on that clip even more I don't want to get it too hot that's probably looking good enough right there because uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply um, a color grade over the whole image uh, to kind of tie it together. So what I did is I went ahead and took this sequence and I nested it into another sequence so now we can just grade all three of those layers just in one, in one fail swoop. So to nest a sequence, you just take the sequence that you're working on here, this one's labeled Church Filmmakers, and drag it onto a new sequence there. And what that basically does is it flattens all three of those layers onto a single layer. So you can apply an effect to this new sequence and it will apply it to all three clips. So let's adjust this, let's bring up the exposure a little bit. 
Now I know for this particular piece, I want it to be brighter. That's part of the reason why I picked this room. I really, it really fit the feel of the video. So I'm gonna bring the blacks down a little bit. Bring up the saturation, make that pop a little bit because we shot it in Canon Log. So it was a little flat. Um, things are looking a little green to me, so I'm just gonna bring in a little more magenta, kind of give it that Canon magenta-y look. And then I'm just gonna warm it up just a hair. And so now we're looking, uh, we're looking pretty good. And once you do the grade and even bring the exposure up a little bit more, these areas start to blend in even nicer. Um, and just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna copy that color grade. And I'm gonna paste it on all these layers here. So we can just toggle off and on. So, you know what? I got an even better idea. I'm gonna even duplicate this bottom layer and take Lumetri completely off so we can see. So I'm just gonna toggle on each layer so you can see what it did. So that was ungraded, graded, brought back the window, brought back the couch. All right, so that last shot was looking pretty good there, and I was able to do that without the big expensive light, without the diffusion, without all the grip gear outside the windows. I was essentially able to relight that scene with my tripod and doing this trick in post-production. And it's just so important as church filmmakers, um, as a way to overcome our lack of resources or in this instance, just poor planning. I just totally forgot to bring the right gear for the job. Uh, it's so important that we rely on creative problem solving and also our community and just sharing when we learn things like this, just sharing with each other. And that's actually why I've got another video coming to you in just a couple days with another trick that has totally saved my butt on a couple of similar shoots to this. So be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, if you have any questions about how to do this trick or if something wasn't clear, just leave a comment below and I would love to chat with you.